Yeah. Yeah. Crazy the spirit. Yes, spirit. One is epic. Yeah. yeah I, I feel like, yeah, that's my favorite movie. Which then is interesting. My two favorites are both 2D. But uh, it's not it's not like I have a preference between 2D and 3D. It's just I feel like those two are the most unique stories there. Um, from its storytelling perspective. And then I've met a few of the, I mean, okay, I've met um, the director for Give Me Heart. I've met the director for Heather Boy. Mm -hmm. I've met the director for Remy, and I've, I've actually worked with him for years before. Because when we started, we do comics. Um, we still do comics till mm -hmm. now. It's something we've always done. And when we first started out, we we were like publishing comics that were created by other people. We didn't yet have in-house comics. So we worked with them, Shof, Shof and his brother. We published one of their comics. All right. Yeah, sure. we've just been working with a Nigerian studio on a comic. Sorry? Uh, we've just uh, finished working with a Nigerian studio on a comic book as well. Oh, wow. So you guys do comics as well? Yeah. Oh, we've got two on our slate at the moment. We've completed one. And now we have, actually not true, we have three so we've got in the works and we've finished. I mean, I don't know if Kariba is considered uh, one of ours. I assume it is. I mean, if, if, we if you're collaborating with them, then. Kariba is... Kariba is really nice. I remember I first saw that in like 2015 or 2016. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah, but the art style of that is um, very beautiful. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I am familiar with some of your work. So that's why, like, as soon as I saw this, I was like, hey, let me just go on here. Even though I was like a little book, but <laughs> yeah. did you did you start in illustration yourself, like in doing comics, or did you have a animation background? So it's funny. Personally, I've done both, but never at a professional level. So what I mean is, I've been drawing since I was like, since I was very very little, right? So I I've been drawing comics my whole life. But I've never published a comic like that I created by myself. I've never done that. Also, animation, I didn't realize it at the time, but I was animating as a kid. It's just that it was me, um, um, what's the word? Like bootstrapping it rather than doing traditional animation. Because here's what I was doing. I would draw in Microsoft Paint. Yeah. With a mouse, no yeah. stylus, with a mouse. I would draw in Microsoft Paint, import the images into Point, and use the PowerPoint slides as the animation. So I didn't quite realize that what I was doing was animation. It's just I wanted to. So yeah. I've always been a person since I was a kid, but it was when I got older and started the business, then I just basically ended up managing artists and um, um, getting their work produced. So I would say I, we started with comics and then we've done animation, but I personally have never um, done either by myself. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, oh, and it's sorry. a super strength uh, because uh, I feel uh, like, I, oh, sorry, go ahead, Caroline. I was just saying it's so frustrating because I, I've got a ton of questions for you <laughs> because I, I I just thought it was, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, we could do like and rapid I'm... fire questions and then I could give you guys my email and I'll keep in touch after this. Um, yeah, I'll, just would... type, I'll just type my email in the chat now. Well, actually, you guys, yeah, I'd, I'd... hold on, Mike. You guys can actually ask each other yeah. the questions here. It gives, it gives us a room whereby at, at least one studio can actually ask another studio um, great questions and uh, you know that's that's symbiotic symbiotic relationship can, can pretty much start here 
right? And you can just continue. So that would be great for us if you guys can just go on, ask the questions you need to ask here. And, you know, it will be a great learning process for everyone who joins on later or watches the video. No, I would, I would, I'm keen to do that. Unfortunately, I have to leave in about a minute because we have another, another, um, meeting lined up that i have to run out to but caroline i don't know if you are if you have time maybe you i don't know i don't know what your commitments are like but um yeah i'm definitely keen to okay well let me try and think of something <laughs> something broad that we can ask you now quickly before we have to dash um wh what was the sort of genesis of eyg was it was that a concept that you came up together or Okay, so once once we got the opportunity to pitch to Disney Animation, we developed three pitches, and their development team um, walked us through the pitching, the process of creating the pitches. So, so I think we we did that. We were working with Devo for maybe three or four months, just brushing up our pitches. So mm -hmm. all the ideas were ideas that we we let me say conceptualized just to pitch to disney animation we were not working on those ideas before the opportunity came up so okay. they were not if, even though the seeds of iwaju my co-founder fikayo he wrote iwaju and the seeds of that story had been in his mind for years but he had never actually penned it down so it was when we got the opportunity that was when we actually solidified okay there's this idea and this idea and this idea let's pitch this yeah. Oh, brilliant. And, and part of the reason for that is Disney did not want to use any of our existing IP um, because right. they wanted okay, an IP that they would own fully. So if they were adapting yeah. any of our comics, that, that would have been different. So we didn't use any story that we already had. Yeah. Okay. Now that was a very similar process for um, Kizazimoto, actually. Um, we, yeah from the directors because we actually in the beginning we we had some we had some ideas of of uh stories we thought maybe directors would be interested to tell but every every director we spoke to was like no i have a story my own culture <laughs> and you know it was it was much better um that way around than trying to pitch them some ideas that they might want to take on board yeah Um, uh, and the sort of the art direction, um, how did you guys uh, handle that? Was that something that you had a lot of beginning? Yeah, we had a lot of control over the art direction, but also the fact that we wanted to try some experimental things and just didn't have the budget for it in terms of time. Um, it would have taken... It, it would have taken a long time to find something that works. If you if you notice, there are a lot of Ankara patterns in Waju. And mm, we were going yeah. to go even much, much further with that. Like we're going to design the entire art style around patterns, but um, that would have taken too long to just to find something that doesn't look um, like chaos. Mm, so mm. That, that's why we're ended up settling for what we did in that sometimes when we're splitting the screen we show Ankara patterns and then if you look at all the crates especially on the mainland there are a lot of crates and each crate has a slightly different pattern so if you look at all the crates um, from a distance it looks like a huge pattern across the sea oh, cool. things like that and then an interesting visual element we added um, we, we had what we call flexible screens, where it's like, it's like, imagine if in the future, screens have become so cheap, they are as cheap as paper, like yeah. So when you look at trash on the ground, a lot of the trash is just screens, like flexible screens. The screens <laughs> are flexible. Yeah. So it's like, instead of sheets of paper on the floor, you're just seeing screens everywhere. And, and the screens are still lit up, even though they are on the floor, they are not connected to device but they are self-powered, so they're still mm -hmm. lit up. So it just lets us add pops of color everywhere. So those are the things we could pull off, but we had a lot more experimental ideas and just couldn't pull them off. 
Yeah. But yeah, we had we had enough control over the outside. There's only um I've only been to Nigeria. Um I've been to Lagos and um Hot Harcourt some time ago. But um, you know, even with my limited Nigerian design culture, I really felt a sense of 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 realism, even though it's a futuristic, stylized kind of world, I felt I felt like the design was really grounded, and I really I really appreciated that. And I wondered, if, um, people who are are actually Nigerian and are familiar with the world that you're creating, what what was the oh, response? Oh, the reaction was much better than we expected. You put a lot of little details in, and I don't know if people will notice, but people actually notice it. One video on social media where. It looked I was like, look at the interlocking tiles on the floor. Look at the flowers. <laughs> look at like she was pointing out all the little details, and I was like, yeah. yes, that is true. That is true. We did that deliberately. <laughs> but then um, we also try to capture the way things feel, so that if something has been moved to the future, um, as long as we keep the feeling of it. So, for example, uh, um, that you. Know, you yeah. you were in Lagos. You know people walk up to your car when you're moving yeah. in traffic and try to sell things to you. So we were like, if in our future, if the richest people can now fly over the traffic, then the people who sell will still have to find a way to try yeah. to sell to those guys <laughs> if they are in the air. So yeah, we just try to show the feeling of it. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really sorry. I. I actually have I think it's a, a really amazing uh, coincidence to, to make this really cool. So thanks for jumping on. Yeah, yeah no. so great to meet you. Can't wait to tell Ant. <laughs> yeah, I'm so <gonna> jealous. <laughs> yeah. So I, I put my email in the chat. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Thank you. Yeah, I've I've got it here. Um I'll or shoot you a message. Um, I think we can we can still hold another roundtable session, um, maybe another time, right? With um, okay. so you from from Kogali, you from um, from um, Chidofish, and maybe possibly um, somebody from Disney to come around. Um, I'll discuss with Tolu uh, to see if that can happen, and this can be a more vibrant session. Um, in the future, hopefully, uh, we can do that before third quarter of the year, and we'll see how we can push that forward. Is it, will that be okay by everyone? Cool. Yeah, happy to discuss yeah. and see if we can make something work. Yeah, sure. Yes, and um, don't forget to uh, uh, let me take your email, and I'll mail you about the Art Directors Club if you're interested. Tolu. All right. Thank you. Cool. All right. Okay. Cool. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you, everyone, right. for coming. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll, we'll, I'll send the uh, emails um, in future about the, the session. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, Tony, for joining on this call. It's been a great pleasure. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Cool. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.